Okay, that means um, welcome means we're back. Live. We're live, yes. It's November suddenly. Yes, and we're having the uh, most unexpected summer weather in Toronto right now. So, uh, true. A uh, little bit frightening, but we'll take it. Um, Monday it snowed. Monday it snowed. Today I um, today I biked in a t-shirt. Yes, it's sure. <laughs> six, six, 16 or 17 degrees. It's crazy. Yeah, it's quite nice. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it's a funny feeling on this. Well, anyway, uh, summer is apparently not over. So <laughs> uh, it's still August. Um, welcome back to uh, the next In Session. And uh, In Session is the thing that we do here at Derivative. Um, regular, sometimes a little bit irregular. Um, where we uh, get guests from our community to talk about their projects and maybe their problems and things like this. That's right. And we invite some of our uh, developers to uh, um, look at these problems and maybe find some ways to optimize them and, uh, and go from there. Yeah. They, uh, sorry, I just lost my mouse. Where's my mouse? Here it is. Um, such we, a, have, such a, sorry? We, we have a pretty interesting uh, combination today, touch designer and juggling. Yeah, exactly. Not necessarily <laughs> what, uh, or yeah, it's funny, it strikes you, we have to do a lot with music and things like this, so this strikes a little mm. bit as left field, but in the end it's so much, uh, so many things in touch design are actually being used in the uh, performing arts that it makes yeah, yeah. total sense for this. I yeah. wanted to point out this one thing before we get started, that if you go to our website, derivative.ca slash in session, then this is actually where you can find um, a description of what we're doing here. Also including with a link to the uh, uh, latest videos or to the playlist. And um, we do invite everybody, and down at the bottom there is a registration form. Uh, we do invite everybody to fill out the registration form uh, with information about your project, and um, perhaps we could have you then here on the show at some point as well. So having said that, should we have a look? Um, oh, I should say I'm a little bit proud of this. So <laughs> I used the last couple, uh, used the last couple uh, well, actually just yesterday, to uh, um, give myself <laughs> more control. So I don't have Yay. to click stuff in Touch Designer anymore. I actually have a little control device, which is amazing. Anyway, so I'm going to click the next button here, and this will reveal our guests for today. Ta -da. There we go. Oh. oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> everybody. Oh, Hello. We here we have everybody. Manuel and Benjamin. Or ben. ben. Welcome. Manuel yeah. is Good joining us. Here. Manuel is joining us from Austria and Ben from France. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rest of us are here in Toronto. So welcome guys. Thank you so much for uh, for uh, agreeing to be to uh, join us on in session today. It's great to have you. Thanks for the invite. It's fun to actually be here after having seen it so many times on the stream. Okay. So cool. <laughs> Excellent. Nice. That's good. Yeah. And I guess we should, um, we also have Eric here, mm. um, I, there, <laughs> who you probably recognize from a previous or from a few previous uh, um, in sessions. So, yeah, um, we, uh, we saw, Manuel, we saw your, or you popped up basically on the radar when you published a uh, component on the community forum which does uh, an OSC, it's an OSC query component basically, and that kind of lurked the interest because there's quite a bit of this happening currently where people try to connect Touch Designer to other applications via web um, protocols or protocols in general. So that was really interesting to see. Um, but the background of it, that's what we kind of were mentioning before, right? The background is that you actually come from a uh, juggling background and uh, right gonna put on here a little bit um, a video of what you do so you are a two-time juggling world championship world holder Ta -da. Yes. That's <laughs> yeah. 
and the I video that don't... we're seeing is not CG. It's actually no. real. Uh, yeah, I'm actually the one on the left, and the one on the right is my colleague Dominic, and it's one video that we have created in during the first lockdown um, because we have a studio and we can use the studio, so we took some time to film that. Nice, and it occurs to me it's a spaced out out uh, activity, so. <laughs> You're yes, properly it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. COVID so, don't, so don't watch the transition we're doing right now, because we will switch to back to back and come closer, I guess. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. We can, we can uh, blend that over. No, that's fine. You're breathing in different directions. So all good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so your background is juggling. And this has been something that you've been doing for a long time, right? Um, yeah, so basically, I think I'm juggling for like 25 years wow. or something. Wow. So I started as a young boy, and it really started with my brother and me performing at some street festivals, and then it slowly everything developed, and um, we had the chance to um, um, to teach some young pupils and they were super motivated and then our team got bigger and bigger and with many people in our team having a technology background it was very clear for us that it is interesting to co combine our interest in technology with the juggling that we also very much love. Is, is that very commonplace in the world of juggling? Is there a lot of technology driven, well, performances? Mm, I think it's not really a common thing. I mean, there is, especially there's a lot of LED equipment, mm -hmm. but if it comes down to like real time projections using touch design or something like that, it's very uncommon because it's not that easy to do that nice and right. have the skill sets, right. I think. But actually, I think it's really a beautiful thing because juggling itself is so visual and to to combine that with the visual arts oh. with the projections i think it really yeah, works yeah. very well is this the uh, is this the act galactica that you just uh, released recently yeah we okay. actually did not yet release oh, it okay, okay. but it will soon <laughs> maybe <laughs> you could maybe you what, could uh, maybe you could go through what what uh, how how all this is being achieved right now cuz it's pretty amazing yeah, so at the moment it's only uh, pre-rendered visuals, it's uh, from After Effects, okay. but the main part that will um, happen uh, shortly, it is all real-time particular effects. So how we do that is the LED club, it, additional to the, infrared, uh, to the RGB, to the color LEDs that we can see, it also has infrared LEDs. So we use an infrared camera to just see the, the, the clubs on the stage. And then we use OpenCV to um, get the bounding rectangle and the orientation. And then we use a GPU a particle system to like draw something like a thousand particles per frame for each club and then do some manipulations with that. That's nice. Really works mm -hmm. so well. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, really nice and dynamic, basically. The, the, the clubs are so dynamic themselves, and then that mm -hmm. makes it really fitting with the particle system on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah stunning. It's really so, great. And yeah, this is a really nice use of uh, you're using uh, front projections, even, but um, I think, right? But it doesn't. Yes. Uh, yeah, your shadow doesn't. Uh, it, it it seems really like a nice one stage setup. It's great, beautiful, amazing. We, yeah. For for another theater show that we do, we also use like some hologram style projections. Okay. Um, but in general, I think front projection works very well with the juggling because, especially when you look now, it, the clubs are never where the body is, so it's very seldom that you get big shadows. So it works very well, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess if the club is where the body is, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Intersection, yeah. 
Well, there's another video that shows also that um, you you are using like you're using particle systems, and here in the next one you're using the NVIDIA Flow system. Oh, yeah. um, and again, it's a uh, it looks like it's somehow tracked. Um, yeah. Is it just camera feedback or just camera uh, input or you're using uh, tracked uh, equipment there as well? Yeah, so here for this act, it's actually two cameras. So for the body things, we use uh, Kinect V1 actually. And for uh, when the hoop is glowing or lighting, it's actually an RGB camera. And because the hula hoop is the brightest um, element in the scene, we can easily um, just see that. Yeah. Incredible. Oh, just yeah. beautiful. It is. It's also very responsive. Mm -hmm. like hardly, seems hardly any delay in the whole thing. It's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Lots of R&D time, Manuel. Yeah. Yes. A lo lo lot of play time and also mm -hmm. thanks, <laughs> thanks to coronavirus, we... Yeah had some more time to <laughs> develop some new stuff yeah so how much of this interactivity did you actually um, add to your shows in the last uh, half year did you start that previously or was that something actually that now through more time to play around came with it yeah i think like the first first thing that we used was some basic light painting some basic feedback and we created an act, I think it was already maybe six years ago. Mm -hmm. And since then we have constantly developed different material. We have created a first theater show where we use uh, big white boxes as a projection surface that is also changing. We have a little bit of cam schnapper um, projection mapping going on and yeah. I it's just, constantly evolving. I just realized how nicely actually the light from the hoop interacts mm -hmm. with the uh, with the projection. It's like as if you that lighting is hard to achieve otherwise. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> great. Yeah. Uh, well, Greg has a question about it. Actually, oh. wants to know uh, what camera you're using. Um, we're using mostly a FLIR Ethernet camera. Which one? Sorry. Uh, FLIR, so That's point right. gray. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. At a, and is it at a high frame rate or? It's 60 frames. 60 frames, yeah. Oh, okay. it's, it's actually a really big difference for fast moving objects like juggling clubs to have a high enough frame rate. So at the beginning we used something like 25 or 30 frames and it's such a big difference to mm -hmm. have higher frame rates. And in the video right now, we kind of see, let me just start that here again. We kind of see, um, uh, I think you described it as like experiments that you were doing with, yeah, with the uh, um, uh, clubs and hoops that you could basically uh, talk to through a common interface somehow. What, what are we seeing there right now? Because it seems like you're connect, you're controlling the hoop with the club perhaps, or uh, what's happening there? Yeah, so um, it's uh, the, the, the props that we are seeing, it's part of some research that me and Ben, especially Ben <laughs> um, did. And he, he developed the whole framework and the software to um, control uh, pixel strips and okay. yeah so basically inside of the club we have an imu it has an uh, it's, it's an orientation sensor so we can understand where the the club is pointing and from that data we can manipulate what the the visual effects on on the clubs or control control moving lights that we see now mm -hmm. amazing the benefit being it's all in your studio, right? You have you have that studio available to experiment with these things or yeah. Yes. Oh, that's great. Yeah, nice. Stunning. Yeah. So maybe we should introduce Ben and find out how these two uh, met and uh, started developing together. Hey. 
Uh, yeah, thank you. Hi, Ben. Yeah, it brings back some uh, memories to see those videos. <laughs> um, <laughs> and apparently some of them you haven't seen yet. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, I discovered uh, the new, uh, new act uh, yesterday. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I'm really happy how, how it's going. Uh, so I'm Ben. Um, I, uh, I'm a nomad, a digital nomad, I think. Uh, I, yeah. I uh, I travel and I uh, develop some softwares um, and uh, and one of them is uh, Chatagne. Um I'm specialized in new technology for uh, for shows and for artistic projects uh, and especially specialized in uh, speed coding and uh, unknown territory. Let's say uh, so. I, I really like to dive into projects that have not been done or technologies that are new to the artistic uh, um, world and try to make the most out of them and, and bring them also to a usable place for artists. So I, I, I took a lot of time uh, focusing on creating uh, interfaces and tools that uh, not, uh, not only I can use, but also the artists I, I work with. Uh, most of the time, I don't do, I don't tour with uh, with the different uh, with the different artists I work with. So I really needed some software to that uh, that um, that all other people I work with right. uh, could, could use, and I could like leave and have them not call me every week, uh, basically. So um, so I created chatting for that, and uh, a while before I was. Uh, I was also juggling, uh, really not at the same level uh, as Manuel, uh, for sure. Uh, but this is how we got to to, to meet uh, during a juggling convention, and I was already creating light clubs. And then uh, we played on the same act. Or I didn't play actually. My friend, who is an actual good juggler, played with my clubs, my light clubs. Uh, and after the show, we we met and um, uh, we, we met and we we wanted to to work together on this whole technologic and juggling projects. Uh, and a few years ago, uh, other uh, encounters happened, and uh, a, a company in San Francisco, uh, Flotoys, mm -hmm. uh, started a project with Light Club. So we decided to merge all the efforts and all the, the knowledge to make, a, to make the best possible props, mm -hmm. uh, like, yeah, dream. Dream props we want uh, props. for what we want to, to see in a show. Uh, so we started this adventure uh, with uh, Manuel and uh, uh, and Flotoys, and yeah, it's been a, good, a great adventure so far, mm -hmm. uh, and it's still uh, yeah still continuing. We will um, likely be working together again in January for the for a showcase uh, of the of those clubs uh, that will hopefully be out of prototyping phase uh, soon. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> uh, we, we, we still managed to, like, like you see in the video, and we still managed to, to do a show together last year uh, in, at the EJC, which is European Juggling Convention, gathering around uh, 5,000 uh, 5, jugglers hmm. wow. from around wow. the world. Uh, and um, the Jonglissimo was chosen to be uh, to do the opening act, uh, opening show of the, of the festival. So we worked uh, together on that. Uh, I, I mean, I worked a bit and created a few light, uh, I don't know how to say, uh, light creation for for that. And we did a lot of research for, for this show and it was, yeah, it was great. Was that the cool. last video that we had here, uh, this one or? Yes. This? Yeah. The, this is a part of the, of the show, yeah. There's a, there's a, I really like this one part here where you basically uh, um, hand over the light from one to another. Very nice. mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Very this well. was exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing choreography on top of all the uh, technology and stuff, the, the actual juggling and the performance and, and choreography is beautiful. Very nice. <clears throat> so, so Ben, you have, a, you have a very interesting background. You graduated from uh, CG and visual effects school and orchestra conducting school. Yes. Yes, and the last uh, one is, uh, is it's amazing how you managed to merge these two things together in Chatin. Yeah, <laughs> thank you <laughs> for the great transition. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm passionate about music, and I always wanted to to bring everything together like this. And 
at some point I was trying to find a way to to yeah to 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 get all of those pieces of software. There was a time where it was not like there there was no one software to do to do it all, and I actually think still think there is not even if touch designer is getting close. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I tried to think about a way like how to 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 think about that. Um, and during my orchestra conducting school, I got to to experience uh, what what, is, what it is to be a musician, but not to play an instrument, just be the one uh, making sure that every everything is uh, running smoothly and everyone is playing together. Uh, and I found it really interesting to try to translate that to the technologic um, aspect of shows and and and, and setups. Um, and for me, it made it made more and more sense to to have this uh, uh, yeah this central piece that is not doing any heavy lift uh, heavy lifting work, but still able to to see everything and to understand what should be where. Uh, so because I have a bad internet connection, I'm actually uh, locked down in the mountains right now. Uh, Manuel, I think it's uh, your screen now. Yes. Uh, thank you for the anticipation. <laughs> Uh, Manuel will be my screen. <laughs> uh, so yeah, can you do, go one page down? Why Chatagne? Um, so I kind of explained it a bit uh, earlier. I, I will try not to take too much time for that. Actually, I, I can't see. Ah, I will do it. Sit on my computer as well. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, for, first it's uh, something that everybody knows. I think if you have worked for any artistic residency, in your life, is that you have, you never have enough time to do whatever you want, uh, and then my priority, because uh, I often uh, hired by other people, is that I need to leave a clean setup, a clean uh, system when I, when you go uh, when I when I leave the project or when the project is finished, because maybe I want other people to to take on or the the artist to be able to still create after me. Uh, after my uh, my uh, session with him or her, and because of that, I think there there is a lot of ways in a lot of other uh, um, systems that don't allow for fast prototyping and also like yeah clean things. So I needed a fast tool, a tool that I, I can create fast and then do something clean after that and give it. Uh, so yeah, second point is kind of the same for that. Um, Improve one solution is the really shitty ones. Oh, I'm not polite here. Uh, yeah, I, uh, because I'm uh, again. I was always trying to, to 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 do something and starting from scratch and starting from scratch. I lost time and effort and energy uh, on small solutions on not really uh, good solutions because it was already uh, always starting from scratch. So at some point I wanted to improve on something. So shutting also was my attempt to build every time uh, a bit more. Um, I have a big problem with cross-platform software because uh, a lot of good softwares were, are only on Mac or only on Windows or sometimes only on Linux. Uh, and yeah, you want to be able to work with anybody, even on Raspberry Pi or anything. So I think cross-platform and, uh, and yeah. Software independent is uh, really important for that. The orchestrator part I told you I told already, um, and avoid cross software as cross hardware communication, which is the next slide. Um, thank you. So I teach also uh, technology for art in school, sometime. And one thing I one of the things I really try to to teach uh, for student, uh, st students students starting doing that and not really knowing how to think about a, a solution. And actually, even artists, senior artists, uh, and thing, uh, are interested in that, <laughs> it seems, is that often you will only use the tools you know how to use, or you will just do things and say, OK, there are connections to be made. Just uh, let, let, let them, uh, let's, let's create them. And for me, if you have. Uh, I always draw a layout, a uh, data flow and a connection layout of what is communicating with what is communi communicating with what. And if it looks like that, basically, it's really not good because you don't want crossing uh, lines in your communication. It's 
for sure something that will bite you uh, at the worst possible moment, like one hour before the show. Uh, something's not working and you, you are not able to really uh, narrow down where it is because there are so many parts that are uh, like half, uh, half smart. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, my proposition to that is, thank you, oh, so synchronized. Um, <laughs> Uh, my proposition to that is that uh, Shateng, uh, so software I built, is uh, trying to make sense out of, of this and trying to synchronize all of those uh, messages and uh, controls and information across softwares. And that's it. It won't do anything else. Uh, actually, maybe a bit more than that, but ba basically the, the idea is that you get a clear interfa interface for that. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's important to go after that. So, um, it's, a, it's a conductor. It's a conductor. It's really a conductor. It, it will not play any instrument, but it will try, <laughs> try and uh, and make sure that uh, all of, all of the players are, uh, yeah, getting it right. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Can we go to the to the interface, maybe? Maybe or yeah, use case. Oh, interesting. Yes, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, some use case: show control and monitoring. So just what I s uh, said: interactive uh, interaction and escape games, escape rooms. Uh, yeah, some people uh, did that. So Shatten is um, uh, has two main parts, which is the state machine and the time machine that we will see in a bit. And because of the state machine handling the interactive part and uh, the time machine that can handle timed. Uh, control. Uh, it makes uh, it makes uh, a really good tool to actually create uh, uh, automatic behaviors. So you can just let it run, and it's really small, uh, very light. So so you, it's really easy to, to 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 put it even in a Raspberry Pi and have a whole show or a whole interactive installation uh, run on that. Creation prototyping is really good as well because a lot of modules and really fast ways to check. Uh, to send signal, to check signal. I guess the designer has a, a same way of uh, doing some of that. Um, for me, I, I like to use chatting for, for really small things and uh, really uh, easy ways to, to try and send some message and, or control or send some color and see if everything's working as it should. Um, external animation tool that is with the timeline that we will see. Communication testing, I, do, I use it a lot when I have OSC problems or communications through different uh, devices or uh, uh, something is not behaving like it should and I, I will just put that thing in the middle and just try to audit whatever uh, is coming in and out and I can uh, send messages for that. Um, and protocol conversion and message routing because, uh, can you can you uh, go two, two slides down, please? <laughs> um, uh, just after, yes, uh, so, why protocol conversion and message routing is because I try to implement in chatting uh, as many protocols that are possible. Uh, again, a bit same as a touch designer for that uh, in a different way. But then my, uh, my idea was to, to be able for anybody to, to just grab something. I have a MIDI device, I have OSC, I want to plug in a serial device. I have WebSocket or HTTP queries to do, joystick, some softwares. Uh, I can just uh, take some data, uh, throw it uh, converted already for, for something else, and I don't need any special skills, any really any big training to do on any uh, uh, software. I, I, I would just do it. So uh, I, ca I can quickly also give that to people who just want some data transition or from one software to another to, to just uh, yeah transfer some data. Uh, yeah, great, great. Uh, should should I go straight away into Shateng and then we can see how Manuel is doing that, or do we have? That would be nice. Yeah. For that? Yeah. No. If you can okay. have a little bit look at the software itself. Uh, so hopefully, I don't know uh, for people uh, <laughs> listening to us. Uh, maybe um, can can you go quickly to the website? Sorry, just for people to understand. The where website. It is. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the website is uh, this one. So. Yeah, so the address, I guess, is somewhere in the description of the video. The video. Uh, you can just download it here. It's free. It's open source. Um, 
yeah, to whatever you want. Uh, it's for all platforms, and uh, yeah, just so people uh, see that it's the website. <laughs> um, yeah, we have the we and... have your URL also at the bottom of the screen here. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. For people. Oh, oh yeah, you. great. Yes. Uh, true. Okay, so there are some tutorials. There is a documentation. There is a Discord server. There is a forum, uh, and the GitHub. So, and uh, yeah, workshop map. Uh, if you are really interested. So yeah, everything here to, to get set up. Um, and yeah, we can maybe go back to yeah that. Um, so this is interface. Uh, it's based on a framework that I created called uh, Organic UI that we created with a company called Organic Orchestra. Uh, it has a moving panels, so you can basically create uh, your own layouts, save your layouts, um, kind of Adobe-like uh way uh you can yeah you can save those, those, those layout you can there are so, some things uh first thing maybe if that is that if you all want to get to know a bit the software and uh, you are not sure you can actually launch the guide maybe you don't do it uh, manual but just launch it from guides here you can just do that Ooh, yeah and you will have uh yeah yeah, yeah launch it launch it sorry <laughs> I can just... and then you will have this interactive guide uh going like yeah showing you uh I, I don't yeah bringing you through the different part of the uh, software uh, you can uh, hit escape i will do it live this time but for people wanting to get to know it so the modules uh, on the on the top left is the connection to anything um that you want to co to, to to control or get information from every you know, most modules are bidirectional uh, some of them are only unidirectional it depends but so then you like, can see here. Sorry if I can interrupt, yeah. Charlie. It looks like it's, yeah, not yeah, yeah. Just, it's not just a communication, but definitely also a control for hardware because you have serial and DMX in there and MIDI. Um, yes. So it's, yeah, it's outgoing as well. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not just, uh, yeah, yeah. It's basically, you, you, I, I would say you can do whatever you want with it. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is that you can, because it's a hub, I try to have it be able to communicate with as many things possible. Uh, DMX, for example, is I, I would not really uh, recommend doing big shows with that. But if you are only controlling six lights and you want uh, to control that from a MIDI and just, just that, you can just do it like this and not learn any other software uh, required to do that. Or if you want to, to send some DMX information from a sensor and this is just too much for grandma or some ten thousand uh, dollars uh, equipment that is not able to do that then you can use a zero dollar software to do that instead um so yeah i i really wanted to to be kind of uh, exhaustive is not a good uh he's a fake friend i think a complete a complete list <laughs> uh, um so yeah you have protocols protocols is basically all the open uh, open communication protocol. So you have OSC, OSC queries that we will see uh, uh, after with Manuel uh, and the rest. I can't even read here, so I will do it my way. <laughs> uh, yeah, MIDI, DMX serial, which are uh, for devices, uh, UDP, TCP, HTTP for any really completely free to interpret uh, protocols and web sockets also. Uh, if you want. PJ Link is for controlling project projectors, uh, video projectors. Mm -hmm. And then in hardware, you get some sound cards. So because for me, everything is a module for chatting. Everything is a module, uh, meaning that if you want to, to take uh, to input sound or output sound from uh, uh, from chatting, uh, you, you will use a sound card. And uh, the information from a sound card, like the volume of the voice, is uh, the same of the same type, kind of in, like in touch designer as well. Everything is data and it's just a matter of uh, uh, choosing which one you want. So yeah. sound cards, remote, Joy-Con, keyboard, mouse, Kinect V2, uh, only on Windows, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, gamepad, joystick, stream deck, and uh, GPIO is for Raspberry Pi, so you can control actually uh, directly the GPIOs from the Raspberry Pi from chatting. Mm -hmm. um, which makes it, I think, one of the only software able to do that in, uh, on Raspberry Pi. So um, you could really easily do some uh, button control and, and uh, LED just with that without coding anything and be able to control or send OSC somewhere and 
I don't know, build your own uh, small board with a Raspberry Pi and that, and you don't, yeah, you don't need to to, have, to put one line of code. And so it looks like um, you have also in all of these there's community modules, so it's not yes. like it's locked down, <laughs> but people can actually um, add yes. to the whole to the whole um, environment. Yes, uh, exactly. Um, nice. Yeah, community modules. So you can create your own custom modules that you will host uh, inside your, or like locally on your computer. Um, and if uh, it seems to be something of uh, public interest, then you can just uh, post on Discord, hey, I made this module and we can discuss. And uh, right now I'm maintaining this list. I'm not really being uh, super uh, regarding, in, like, uh, I'm, I'm not really filtering out anything. So. Whenever you want to do a module and share it with uh, the world and maybe have other people being able to improve it as well, you can just uh, send a message on the Discord server or on, by mail or anywhere, mm -hmm. anywhere, and I will add it to the list and you will get it. Uh, so anybody will be able to download it from there. Yes. Um, I, I think one of the amazing things about Chatain is that it is created with a, a mindset to be able to easily expand from the things that you can easily do to do something that might be kind of specific to something but yeah all the, all those community models they are just coded in javascript and it's super easy to do something with that so it's yeah mm -hmm. I, I i really think it's a very nice uh, setup mm -hmm. thank you yeah uh, uh... So the only the main focus I have in mind when developing Chatain is that I want simple things to remain simple and complex things to be as simple as possible, knowing that they might be still complex. But yeah, I really don't want to, to create complex setups that are able to do everything, but still are complex when trying to do something simple. So reduce the time when you want to to quickly prototype, for example. Uh, and yeah, make it as easy as possible uh, for other contributors as well, because <laughs> it's uh, already hard to find contributors. <laughs> uh, I have some uh, golden contributors like Manuel, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then yeah, generator. Uh, so software, sorry, I will. Uh, so hardware, game is in Europe. Software is uh, it's basically it's a variant a variant module from the protocols and already implementing some commands and control and way to handle the software because they have a, a, a strict API. So they have a documentation on how the OSC messages should be constructed, for example. Um, so there uh, it's already pre-made, so you don't even need to know how the software works in terms of proper communication. You just need to know what you want to do on it. Uh, so, for example, if I'm uh, like uh, Resolume, if I want to launch a clip on Resolume, I just select the Resolume module and say I want to launch a clip, and I will have a human readable launch a clip uh, comment for that. Um, generator, for example, yeah, generator is uh, just to generate some data. So, metronome is just a, a click. I don't know how it, that translates to touch designer. And signal is, um, yeah, something like this. And signal is, um, uh, yeah, signal is some LFO and noise and stuff. Um, quick, quick side question, yeah, just, because we just stepped out of software. Um, there's a question if there is any integration yes. between Chatan and Unity or Unreal Engine. So uh, that's very interesting. And this is exactly what we will see uh, after. So Unreal Engine, Touch Designer, um, Unity, Processing, and all of uh, all those uh, software or systems, engines, actually, um, they are open. There is no defined way of, con of communicating with them because you are as a as a as a programmer or as a creator of the project in those software. Uh, you are defining how you want to 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 to, to communicate with it. Whereas uh, closed software like uh, like Resolume or Delight or uh, I don't know I, Ableton Live, there is a defined way of controlling uh, them. And because of that, we we can create a pre 
a, a, a list of presets or a template that will uh, fit all those comments. But if I wanted to control, uh, let's say, the rotation of a cube on Unity or on Touch Designer, I would need to decide in Touch Designer how I would want to communicate to control that. Fortunately, there is this OSC query uh, system that is that have, uh, has been um, uh, proposed uh, a while by uh, by a, a French team, and that is now that we decided to implement, and th that is actually kind of the main subject of the uh, this uh, in session. So we will see that later and how to to do it, but there is no the reason why there is no Unity or Unreal in the software is because there is no uh, defined API or there is no already existing way to control them. It's just uh, it's open. Um, there's another. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's complex. <laughs> uh, sorry. There's another question here. Um, can you have two instances of Shaten on two different computers on the web that can be uh, synchronized so that you can collaborate on the same timeline? Wow, very interesting. And already <laughs> asking the <laughs> difficult the questions. questions. Yeah. Stage designer communities like that, I, I should have remembered. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I like those questions. Uh, yes and no. <laughs> no, it's not a, a good answer. Um, timeline synchronization is definitely something that I, uh, I want to do. Uh, multiple instances of chatting in, on different uh, uh, computers uh, communicating with each other is also is is definitely something that works. Uh, you you just have to synchronize in um, like synchronize messages. You don't need the same session. Uh, if you are talking about, uh, yeah, if you are talking about um, having the same session and working together as a synchronized file, there is no such thing right now. Um, but if you are talking two different timelines synchronized uh, across the network, this is something that we uh, that will be. It's already possible with uh, some uh, some connections and some uh, so, some things. Uh, but it's not native. It's not like uh, uh, so true inside the software. But I, I want to do that because I'm actually creating other softwares, uh, other softwares on the same base uh, than this one. Same interface, same timeline, same everything. It's just different uh, purpose. Like I'm creating now a light software, and I want to be able to synchronize the, the, the timeline from Shateng to uh, to this software or to other softwares like drone choreography software. Uh, so this will be implemented soon, uh, but right now I don't know what you did, but it definitely works. <laughs> yeah, okay, I, so by I, I actually created a, a module that does that, but it was never published. <laughs> so okay, so I'm I'm hijacking what? the OSC um, remote control. Yeah, and I have a certain module that syncs by the name of the sequence, those sequences, only okay. in one direction. Oh, OK. So yeah, basically, it's kind of not so hard to do, and it's definitely possible. Um, I still would want to thank you uh, for this uh, live demo and also showing how fast you can do that. Um, I definitely want that to be native and optimized uh, and yeah, talkable. But these kind of things, if you want to synchronize things, whether it's uh, Shatany and other softwares or Shatany and Shatany, uh, it's, I would say it's all, always possible. It's just a matter of uh, finding out how. <laughs> uh, yes. I do have, um, so the question was a little, bit, it got a little bit more specific. So you could also do a, a collaboration between like two people with Shatan having different uh, parameters to control one system that that support your product. Yes, there are some tutorials showing uh, a video guy, a sound guy, and a light guy, and everyone has a, a Shatan instance on their computer, and they are communicating. All those softwares are communicating through their Shatan. So they can uh, all uh, create uh, interactions uh, however they want, and they only send through chatting the messages. And it allows them to have a very simple way of communication and agnostic in terms of um, if the light uh, engineer uh, wants to send something like intensity of something or a, a top at some point, a queue, um, 
he doesn't need to know what uh, the video uh, guy will do with it. He just sends it, and then Chatagne is choosing what to do with it after. Mm. Uh, so so it, it becomes really uh, fast. And because also it's uh, separated from the end software, uh, again, in Touch Designer, you, you, you can also decide inside Touch Designer, but let's say you export your app in Touch Designer, you can still change what uh, one message, what, uh, the same message, what we, it will do after in a very quick way. Uh, if we can go quickly through how, or maybe there are other questions, I don't know. Um, good, thanks. Uh, I, I, I think something that might be interesting in that regard is that um, everything in Chaten can be controlled through scripts and also through OSC. So if you toggle on this OSC remote control, you can just select whatever parameter you see in the UI and say copy OSC control address. And then I will have an address that actually controls if I send it to Chaten that lets me control that UI element, that parameter from another software or from yeah. another Chatein instance? Um, I, I would say, OK, <laughs> uh, so this is true. Everything can be controlled. I would say it's not the main way to do it, but it's still possible. Yeah. yeah. And script at the same time, if you create a script, you can access any button, any key, anything from mm -hmm. anywhere. Um, be warned that if you enable remote control, everybody from this network would be able to control it and also close the software. So. <laughs> It's kind of <laughs> it's a very free <laughs> environment, a bit too free maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like I like it like that. Um, so maybe we can qu quickly go over the interface. Uh, and so you have modules. Uh, let's say you have I don't know uh, OSC or MIDI. Maybe you have a good MIDI controller, right? So yes. let's say you have some MIDI here. Let me switch that into my USB socket. And now it's uh, saying connected up. So it's saying it's connected. You can see on the module side uh, some arrow, uh, the, the blue arrow showing that there is incoming signal, basically. And the green one uh, on the left is uh, saying that the uh, device is connected. Um, so you get uh, some things, and on the right, so this is a proper, the same as a property panel in Touch Designer, so inspector, uh, vocabulary, vocabulary is borrowed from uh, Unity. Uh, you can see the value of, uh, it's a CC, right? Uh, so this control change is uh, just, yeah, ch changing over uh, when uh, manually is uh, changing that. So basically it will add uh, a lot of different values here, and you can create in the, in the middle of the software, you get this um, checker uh, board, and this is the state machine. So the state machine is uh, like a Turing style state, state machine, complete uh, NP complete state machine, I, th I think. Turing complete state machine. And um, which means that uh, you can transition and do a lot of different things. But basically, you can create states. And a state is a set of rules that are applied and uh, while the state is active. So an active state will just verify and uh, uh, a different uh, a various number of set of rules, uh, which are divided into concepts, which are actions. Uh, actions are uh, if then. May, so if you are talking with words, it's like if I hit this note or if my slider is more than this value, then I can do things. Like I want to play the sequence when I play when I uh, change uh, this um, thing. So here, okay, <laughs> it's uh, a bit fast, but basically you have this learn. When clicking learn, he, he, he hits the key, and then he can uh, do okay. When my um, when uh, I, I don't I don't see exactly what what's going on here, but uh, I've, the, the the screen is a bit okay. Oh yeah. So when the control change uh, value is zero, uh, can, can you can you show the, the the controller at the same time? Sorry. Oh, we so, have uh, two videos there. Um, oh yeah. Let's try. Okay. Sorry. 
to do that here, then the screen is a little bit smaller. But yeah, but you you can actually have a manual and not me uh, as a small. <laughs> Ma manuel needs One. to talk in order for him to show up on the screen okay uh, i talk so but... can, can you ventrilo <laughs> vent ventriloquism next <laughs> ah okay uh so it always shows the one talking yes i see i, I let you do this one then okay yeah so basically what i have done is i have I will remove that consequence again. I have an input value, and if I hit learn here, I can just click the but button, and then it is recognized. It is automatically recognizing the button. So if I hit it, uh, the condition is not green, because my condition is that the button equals zero. And at the moment, it is because I, I keep hit Hitting it, it's 127. So when I release it, it plays, it, it triggers the action in the consequence true. And if I release it, it triggers the action in the consequence false, which if in the true it, is. Maybe it would make more sense that you are actually inverting, like setting, not, not this one, but uh, yeah, here, putting just one. 27, then you actually are uh, checking that you hit. So every time he hits the, the, the button, uh, it will launch the consequence true. And every time he releases it, it uh, will launch consequence false. And you can have as many consequences at the same time or staggered over time, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I will uh, show you a bit after. Uh, Manuel will show you with an, uh, an example after. But this allows for like really, really fast um, uh, change and because you can have multiple consequences, you could say, I want to launch this sequence and I want to start uh, this movie and I want to uh, shut down the lights, for example. Mm -hmm. So this will be my movie start uh, button. And I could have a stop one uh, uh, and then it would stop the movie, stop the sound and uh, open the light again so there can be uh, some people uh, on stage. Um, could be a consequence uh, trigger or could be a consequence used as a condition again. Uh, what do you mean for that? About that? So with that, that? The, uh, that you're like how how deep basically how um, so currently it's an if then could there be an yeah. if then and then another if so to speak? Oh uh, yes, you could do that, but it would go through. Uh, you would go through. Um, uh, how, how to say? Um, uh, custom variables so you you, you would need okay. a transition variable to say so yeah. to, to set actually this is this is true and then another action would check if this is true yeah uh but yeah, nice. you, you, yeah. You, you 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 can do that for sure uh, I, I think it's very flexible so you can ma many times you can reach some uh, solution in different ways so i think you could also just add another action and have as a consequence that this action is actually activated. So only after the first action hit, uh, triggers a consequence, another action is activated. Right. Yeah. OK. Makes sense. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, I think it's yeah. But nested, uh, nested can, be, can, can be done. You, you won't get that in the consequence, but you can definitely have some if, then, if, then, if. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, 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 for sure. Also, basically, you can also have a script condition. So Every time things start to get a bit too complex to do it in UI, uh, you can always go through script. And because those scripts are kind of the same as the designer again, but those scripts are, are really uh, contextu con contextuated, uh, uh, like to put in context. So a condition script will only uh, need to do some to, to put a valid or invalid state. Um, and uh, and module script will only need to deal with modules, and filter script will only deal with, with filters. So every time you, you, if you need a script, it will be really simple. Um, so the, the second type uh, that is there uh, is mapping. Oh, maybe just one thing before in action. Uh, right now, we have a if I hit this key, but you could easily uh, uh, say if I hit this key and this key, <laughs> uh, for example. 
Uh, so another input value, now you get this operator in uh, end on, on top, and here. Uh, so now there are two keys, and if one is uh, one, uh, one or the other, is uh, you can see that it's activated, but it's only when both of them are at the same time are uh, hit that you will get it will trigger the action. Uh, and you can choose or as an operator, and then it will be this one or this one. And now uh, every time you hit either one, uh, uh, one or one of them, uh, it will be validated. So. Again, it's like you, you, you can do that and you can group that. You, you can say if this and that or this and that, for example. Uh, so yeah, here you have this flexibility as well. And mapping, so action is very uh, punctual. It's something that happens uh, at some point when something gets validated. So there is this validation transition set. Oh, I'm not seeing uh, anymore the, the screen. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'll just do this and I will see it uh, from here. Um, sorry. And in mappings, uh, yeah, can you just explain mappings, Manuel? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. having some problems with the video here. So basically, the difference is action is one point at a time, and a mapping is a continuous stream of values. So, as an input value, for example, I will now um, use a slider, so it is will constantly send out the value um, of the slider to wherever I choose to output it. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, now the only thing that we really have is OSC or some sequences. So I could send use OSC. I use um, a, a send to the example address, and if I now um, change the input value, it will send it. But actually, it's it should constantly be sending it, right? Okay, but only if it if, if it is changing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a way. There is a way to do to do that on the in the module. There is this always update, uh, always send uh, in, that you can use. But yeah. yeah. Basically, it's, uh, it's that. So th there is this state machine that we, we can use uh, more. You can just check, uh, see that you can put uh, put on the parameter itself in the MIDI, if you really wanted to do that. What? What do you? Uh, oh, yeah, I have this latency. Oh, now it's back here. Um, yeah, anyway, anyway it, it, it's OK, uh, not a problem. Um, so there is this state machine that is here. Uh, yeah, now you can control the timeline like that. <laughs> from the slider. Um, so the state machine, can you can you create a transition just to show this part as well? Um, so transition, and you can then put transition, which are actually actions. So on some condition, you, you can go from one state to another. And so let go of some rules. Those rules won't, won't be active anymore. Uh, but the the ones uh, on the next uh, the new state will, so you can say my button will do this and that, and then when I hit another button, it will go through another state, and the first button that I was using uh, in my state can have another purpose or just be free, and I can just hit it without be afraid of launching anything. Um, so you can create continuity and um, uh, uh, not continuity. Uh, Chronology, chronologic uh, things like this, uh, and this is also how you can imagine creating some games, uh, game logic or uh, some interactive installation. If, par for example, you are checking position of someone with a Kinect, you can say when this uh, the spectator goes uh, goes in uh, in front of the installation, then it can launch a, an audio thing, for example, and it will move to another state uh, to another state to enable interactions and if I go outside it will go back to the first state and uh, and I don't know launch a demo or some things so you can always um, yeah interactively uh, or manually change states you can have as many states as you want and you can have them uh, linked together so there, there is only one state active or you can have them unlinked and then uh, you can have multiple states active at the same time which mm -hmm. allows you to sort out things. Um, 
there are some on the Discord server. There are some examples, some screenshots and and, and files that you can download, uh, where you can see like some very complex setups with I don't know twenty states and a lot of rules on them. In them, uh, it really depends. It's it's really uh, expanding as the project is exp uh, gets more complex. Right. Um, yeah. So, so basically, all the actions and mapping that are inside of one of those states are only um, triggering any output when the active is um, toggled. So the and transition the... here, what I have created is, if I press a button, then this toggle goes to the next uh, state because the button is defined in the transition. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Um, and I, I will try not to take too much time, and then you can uh, you can show the touch designer part, uh, Manuel. Yeah. Um, so the timeline basically is timed, so nothing uh, nothing too too original from a timeline. You can create triggers, which are uh, uh, events in time that you same as action. You can just create uh, things. Uh, you can create uh, value animation with the curves. You can create color animation with uh, color uh, gradient uh, things. You can draw, and it will nicely uh, uh, go into <laughs> this kind of animation. Nice. Uh, wow. And you can uh, record input data, and it will also simplify the data. Uh, but trying to so, for example, if you have this. Uh, now you can learn from, or just select it. Yeah, maybe just to to show people or learn. I don't know how you want. Yeah, learn. So you have this value. I hope it works because it's. Um, uh, you it's have to from arm. zero to. Yeah. You have to change the range, or. I don't know. Maybe because it's normalized, it should work. But let's put that to that. And you can just arm, and auto disarm maybe. Okay. Uh, so when you arm, it goes red, and now, yeah, it, it can just change its. Uh, so it's moving the slider on the MIDI control uh, MIDI device, and yeah. then when you hit stop, um, it created the the shape, but it's still editable. So nice. uh, we work on that yeah. to 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 have yeah as close as possible. You can still edit it. You can change uh, some uh, yeah inter. Um, Interpolations. You have a full Bezier control. Uh, some nice, uh, some nice shortcuts that are completely hidden and undocumented. But yeah, uh, it works. <laughs> so things like this. There is basic audio, uh, an audio layer. If you want to have uh, like audio playing at some point, very simple. It will ask to create a sound card module, as I said, as, as I said earlier. Sound card is connecting here, connected here, and you can just uh, have some audio. Uh, I guess it's not showing the audio, uh, the file browser from Manuel, but we'll quickly see an audio file here. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, and some super, uh, uh, right. yeah. And you have navigation. You can zoom and, and unzoom with the blue bar. Uh, Ableton lifestyle, very efficient. Uh, and yeah, and you can just play that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, basically timeline, state machine, they can work together. You can launch timelines. You can disarm uh, <laughs> the thing. Uh, so you can you can create uh, timelines. You can animate those values. Then can be output to anything basically. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for for Shatang. There are a lot of other tools around that, uh, but those are the main two concepts. Uh, yeah, for it. great. Yeah, and I, I mean, you can just see how extendable that is. You have a certain, currently you have one sequence, but um, it seems like you can create many sequences that again, in case, like you can trigger those then separately. Yes. That becomes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can trigger sequences. Sequences can activate states. State can activate back sequences. You can have custom variables that allow you to have some memory. So you can set variables or values uh, your own way and check that after. So you can maybe have some uh, score logic if you are creating a game, for example, or, or some interaction. You can have something that uh, a counter that will increment every time you play, for example. So it yeah. can always be different or if you hit uh, so some things, uh, then it will remember and, and, and get back this information later for mm -hmm. other things. So, yeah. 
That's amazing. Uh, so this is Shatang, and now I will let uh, Manuel go to the actual interesting part of this in session, which is how uh, touch designer <laughs> people. Because honestly, I've, I've done this presentation in Berlin uh, at the Node Institute, uh, uh -huh. which was really great. I want also to thank people there uh, for letting me do that, uh, hosting me. And, uh, but it was really fun because it's a touch designer, a strong touch designer community. And there was this kind of, um, this kind of behavior, which is completely natural and funny, but it's it's just when I started and show chatting, they were like, "Yeah, sh touch designer can do it," <laughs> uh, you know, and it's like, sh "Show me something new." Um, so I'm sure they were happy to see that. <laughs> yeah, There's a lot of tools actually, where it, you it make really great, and they were super happy to. To, yeah. to see that but for me it's always a challenge with touch designer people because i know that there is a lot of things that you can do in touch designer it's really great for that uh and uh but i still think that there are some bridge to to make unfortunately i'm not a strong touch designer user and i've not uh, used it in shows uh, or projects uh, myself i'm working with people doing that and one of them is manuel and i think he's uh, really better suited to talk about why it shows to to bring Shatang into his setup while uh, even if he had already a working setup with only designer. So um, before we switch over completely, um, Ben, thank you so much for showing all of this. Mm -hmm. And um, we said yesterday we would ask you why it's called Shatang. Shatang. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, OK, it's a quick anecdote before uh, ending the mic. Um, it's just yeah, really it's nice. it's it's a it's it's a love story, and uh, it's about a uh, uh, girlfriend, the girlfriend I was uh, with at that time. Uh, Chatan is yes, Ch Chatan is chestnut, uh, and she was uh, she she was she, she made she made me crazy talking uh, all the time about with Chatan, so it was kind of our world. And she was young, and she couldn't really say Chatan, which is I love you, uh, but she wanted to 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 say that, but she she had some. Uh, blocking and she really so so we decided to say chatting to each other instead of je t'aime which is sounds close at least in french um and i decided to to do the to choose that for the software and i decided to keep it uh, after the relationship ended because it was still a nice uh, souvenir and i know that it's <laughs> super hard to pronounce in any other countries than uh, <laughs> france um and, also, and even uh, French people, <laughs> even French people don't really understand why it, it's not a software name for sure. Uh, and, uh, but I, I really like that it's keeping things a bit silly and not too too serious. Yeah. It doesn't mean that the software is uh, like made uh, like not seriously, but yeah, for me it's it's a matter of that. Also because it's free open source, it's on my free time, and I want to keep that uh, light mood around it. <laughs> And you can do whatever um, you want. And also, can you tell us the name of the extension? Oh, yeah. The so file extension is Noisette. Uh, uh, it's <laughs> not, basically. <laughs> so yeah, be, be aware when, we, when you say, I have a problem with my nut. Uh, it, yeah. Oh it, my god. <laughs> it came up mm. a lot. <laughs> One day, one day it will be good baguette. Oh, I, could, I, I could add that somewhere in the, in the software. It's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for showing this. Um, the uh, um, you can see, by the way, the tutorials are on your website, um, and uh, I really like the intros to the uh, to the tutorials as well um, <laughs> because they show a little bit the uh, like partially silliness, but on the other hand, it's not the software is not silly at all. It's like a massively serious uh, endeavor, so that's great. Yeah, I like the thank you. There. Yeah, the, 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 it's, it's, so all the graphics are borrowed from uh, Gumball, the amazing world of Gumball, which is a really fun uh, animate, uh, animated, uh, uh, I don't know how to say, um, TV show. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I like it. <laughs> but thank yeah. you. Thank you for the comments. And so now the idea would be that, we are, that we're having a look, Manuel, at what you actually created to uh, uh, be able to connect the two. Because um, yeah, we said we, we saw your um, commit in the community, which was a touch OSC, uh, sorry, not touch OSC, an OSC query server, which you created to make this connection easier between Chaten and touch designer. 
if I understand yes. that right. Yeah, I think it's uh, re really beautiful how they work together through uh, West Sea Query. Uh, I was wondering uh, if we, before we take a look at that, if we want to have a very small example of how we could create something that is monitoring a touch designer instance or sure. installation. Yeah, um, because then we can see a little bit what the normal workflow would be and maybe learn a little bit more about details um, yeah. of Chaten. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I want to have some installation in a museum or somewhere. The installation should start at some time during the day and shut itself off um, at another time. So what I can do here is I can create a system. It's an operating system module. And this lets me add an action that I call start touch designer. And as a consequence, I use a process open file. So I will now select the touch designer file that I have open on the other side already. And I will add another action that I call stop touch designer. And as a consequence, I say I want to kill an app. I want to kill touch designer exe, which is the name of the process when touch designer is running. And I wanted to do a hard kill. So what I have created is I have basically added two actions that start touch designer or stop touch designer. We can try that. I stop touch designer. It closes the touch designer window. And I hit start touch designer. And it opens touch designer again. Nice. Um, what I then want to do is I add an action uh, to, to accomplish this timing. So I add a system time module. Here I have information about the time, a year, everything with the time. So what I said is time start and stop. I add as a input, I add the time, the hour of the day. I want it to be um, bigger than nine. And I add another condition, or let's say bigger, bigger and equals, and smaller and equals 10. So it's, 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 it, it, this action will trigger if the condition, if, if the time condition is met between 9 in the morning or 20, uh, 10 in the evening. And then I just um, say, OK, I want to, if, if this condition, these two conditions are met, I want to trigger this action that I have created. So I say, in the state machine, I say action, trigger action. And I select start touch designer. And for the false consequence, I will um, do the same thing. I say state machine action, trigger action, and stop touch designer. So I will stop touch designer and, and to set so, so a little bit. Just a, a, a small precision on that. So the, everything could be done in only one action, right? You could have this, and then and I consequence true start touch designer, and consequence false stop touch designer. This way. What is interesting is that when you want to, if you want to add something else in Starter Designer, then you can just add it, and it will because it will trigger the whole action. Then you can like compartment everything. Or if you want to hmm. uh, launch it from another uh, uh, things like from a sequence, then you have this action that you can use as a placeholder for a set of comments. Which Sorry. makes sense with the stop touch designer, for example. Um, often in um, in some shows, when you have to shut down the LEDs. For example, of a show, but yeah. the last the last thing that was sent to the LEDs wasn't on, so they stay on. Um, yeah. So before shutting it down, you have to shut down the LEDs. Then if you yeah, you could add that to the stop touch designer. Exactly. Basically. 
before doing that. Yeah, yeah that's great. So what what I have done here now is um, for for the timing, I also choose to add um, that I want to shut down the computer. Um, I disabled that because <laughs> obviously I don't want to do that now. And uh, I can add a stagger. A stagger is basically a delay until the next action is activated. So I can say, okay, let's say you stop touch design and after two seconds you shut down the computer. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, yeah, great. <laughs> okay, and maybe let's have some health or frame rate monitoring in touch designer. So I add an OSC um, module. I add a perform job. Oh, that was not a perform job. Um, I will add, what will I add? The cook rate. And then I will output that through an OSC out job um, to touch designer. We have an input of port of 12,000. So we see now those. Why is it so? Yeah. So laggy. It's sending two values at the same time. That's weird. Cook rate and oh, it might be because you're losing frames. So if you middle mouse click on to perform uh, or OSC out, if you middle mouse click on that, you know, it's usually it's one sending, sample. Yeah, yeah, can you just remove them in uh, in chatting just to check? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. This, that's weird because it means that at some point it received two arguments. <laughs> At the yes. same time, it's possible the uh, the uh, chops are time sliced there, so they can have more than one sample in it. Ah, okay, that's why. Okay. So if I do sample, then that should be fixed forever. Uh, or? Good <laughs> question. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> then it just sends. I have two so creators yeah, of softwares sure. not knowing how they work. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. So basically my idea is that if I notice that the frame rate drops for a couple of seconds below half of the frame rate, then I also want to restart the touch designer process. I can do that um, if I go here in the condition, I use the frame rate and I want the frame rate to be lower than 30 frame rate and we say that restart on bed frame. So I do the same thing I will um, in the state machine I will trigger an action. I will first stop touch designer and after that I will uh, start touch designer and do a little stagger of maybe two seconds. Hmm. And to test that, I add a hog chop, which basically eats up CPU cycles, so the frame rate will drop. And we see it de has detected that it was below, and it is restarting. What was not what I was really going for is that it should not restart on just a short difference. So what I can do is I can add a validation time of let's say 20 seconds to redo the hog and save that. So now this condition must be met for at least 20 seconds. So if I activate the hog job, we will see that the progress in the validation, because now it's down to seven frames, this is slowly deciding, okay, if this condition is met for 20 seconds, then actually the consequence true will be triggered. Oh, nice. 
Wow. That's pretty simple. Yeah. Um, there is one other thing that I wanted to show, but I'm not sure if I actually want to build that now live because we are already taking a lot of time. Hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's basically, I, I can show the finished file. Maybe that's more interesting than me building everything. Um, so basically I implemented a, a ping pong mechanism. So because at the moment we do not really have, uh, or, or before we did not have a, a mechanism to um, decide whether touch designer is actually running or responding. So what I decided to do is to send a ping message from Chaten to touch designer and Chaten would just answer with a pong message. Mm -hmm. And this way I can understand if touch designer is running and responsive at yeah. all. And you can see or, or, or already in the modules, the, the, the icons uh, sending uh, like out and in. Uh, from so you can see the time module uh, which is like the, the metronome i guess uh, no what is it yeah metronome mm -hmm. uh, so the metronome is uh, is uh, activating uh, the pulse uh, sending osc and uh, yeah metronome uh, activating sending osc and then uh, receiving from osc or osc is always always receiving so it doesn't yeah. work but yeah <laughs> um so you can see here some things happening yeah yeah so there is for the ping pong. There is two solutions, but I think we're not taking going into that maybe too much. But my first solution was to to add a script to the OSC. It's actually quite readable and easy to understand, and it's I think similar to how um, Touch Designer is working. You can do a lot of things with the sweet path with the the UI and all the nodes, but if you really need to dig deeper, then there's always the way to have some scripting and to just decide what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And Ben actually told me that there is another, an easier way to, to solve that with two actions. Um, so you don't need that. Yeah. It's very comforting that there's other software where there's always at least five solutions to the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One one thing maybe to, to have a look here also is that for each parameter, similar to how uh, in Touch Designer you can have um, different uh, modes for each parameter, you can have a control mode for this. So you have a manual uh, input or you can have an expression. And here you can just add, like in, in Touch Designer, you would add some small Python script and it evaluates it. And it's the same here in Chaten. You have a way to reference every parameter in the, uh, in, in the UI. And here I get the cook rate parameter of the OSC query module. And then I just divide it by two. So whatever a frame rate is defined in Touch Designer, I, I will be looking for half of the frame rate. Nice, yeah. Okay, I think that's um, enough about that. Um, um, if you... And let's have a look maybe at the OSC query things. Or is the questions regarding to what we have seen now? Uh, no, no questions. Oh, I, I have another good idea. <laughs> so someone is liking... Uh, uh, oh, Greg, from the derivative. Oh, very cool thinking of processes and testing for TD Health. Yes. Your, Indeed, process like it. He would pick up on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. So, so one one thing that I want to add to this now is um, uh, there is the possibility to, to to create a dashboard. So basically, you can send every um, parameter to a dashboard, and you will get some. Um, some buttons here. I'm not sure which is which. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, the, because it's a text, so you can just customize the text, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, let's see which 
launched as what? Okay, this is launching. Okay. So I can create a, a, a dashboard and because it has an integrated uh, web dashboard, um, then we will be able to control um, remotely if we want to start or stop touch designer on, on that Shaten instance. Mm -hmm. So what I did here is, okay, obviously um, pushing those buttons, it will start and stop touch designer. I, in, in the project so, settings, I enabled the dashboard server, which will run on this port. Mm -hmm. And then in the browser or on my smartphone, I can just go to that port and we will get a dashboard. There's two layouts that we have. One is responsive and one is the actual layout of the dashboard. So I can push start touch design and we will start as we were hoping to do nice. um, So this dashboard is really a uh, work in progress. It's still working, but it's already working. And uh, the web interface is uh, Manuel's work. Uh, thank you, Manuel, for that. Oh, nice. OK. Um, Good collaboration so there. one thing, to, one thing to, to really note about the dashboard is that what you see and the way Manuel is doing it right now is that there is no UI not linked to an actual control or data. Uh, you cannot create a button out of nowhere uh, right now in the dashboard. And I think I, I want to keep it that way, meaning that a button is, forced, is uh, always linked to some action or some, uh, like uh, if you have a slider, it's, it's representing a value. So this data has to, has to exist and you create views from those uh, you, you create UI, custom UI, for uh, for existing parameters and values and controls, uh, not the other way around. Uh, this mm -hmm. is how I designed it. So a lot of people are saying, hey, I want a slider. It's like, what is, what is a slider for? Like, what does it represent? And if you don't have uh, something, uh, some data to control, then the slider doesn't exist, <laughs> basically. Right. Yeah. So this is something that may be a bit different for a lot of other uh, interface. Um, Paradigms. Okay, should we move on to the OSC query thing, or is there are there some questions? No questions. No, we can move on. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will just start the example file from the um, GitHub repository. It's, uh, the, the link is in the Touch Designer community. Um, yeah, so I have released uh, this component. It is enabling uh, Touch Designer or, or to expose uh, custom parameters of Touch Designer um, through OSC query. What is OSC query? It is basically a specification um, to make an OSC query client understand what kind of controls the application is offering. So you are not defining your own OSC addresses, but actually my component is suggesting or telling Shaten what there is to control. Um, so it all works through a web server. Um, you can have or add here some components, some containers. Um, here I have just an example. It is actually an empty container with nothing inside. So it's only really interesting to have those uh, parameters that we want to control. And those parameters are exposed through the OSC query server because I have added the path here in the plugin. And what it actually does, maybe it's interesting to understand what is going on. Um, what, what it does, the OSC query component, it, it offers some controls and it's especially this description in, in JSON that now tells Shaten what there is to control. So for instance, there is this my float. It is of type float. It has a full path. This is the OSC query address. 
the current value is this, and it has a range between 0 and 1. And the access says if it is readable, writable, or none of both. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so basically, if we come over to SHA-10, what I want, what I will do is I create an OSC query protocol. I um, put the port, which is 9000. And automatically, because I put the port, it will try to reach the OSC query component. And it already shows the server name and in values I will have all the controls of my effect container available. And if I uh, change those values, they will just magically change in the component, kind of magically. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a very nice way to have um, have everything that Touch Designer or my Touch Designer project is offering um, be controllable through SHA-10. Um, this yeah. is a, there, there's a new, new feature that we just implemented. Um, it is if we add this listen, um, then it is actually a listening uh, as a bidirectional to bidirectional changes. So also. If a change in touch designer the parameter, it will now update in SHA-10. Nice. And with the, this is um, touch in this case is the uh, is the server. Yes. Um, that then other clients can connect to. So, yeah, you could have yeah. uh, SHA-10 and um, whatever understands or C query connect now yes. to touch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. but, um, OSC query is not uh, proper to Chatagne uh, and Touch Designer or this, this. it's uh, implemented by uh, Vidvox. It's proposal from Vidvox. It's, there is nothing, like there is something s semi-official, but uh, some known software that are using it is uh, ManMapper is using it as a server, like the Touch Designer, uh, like this uh, plugin. Mm -hmm. And uh, OSIA score, which is another conductor, uh, uh, similar to Shatang, but in a very different uh, philosophy, is also using it as a client. And actually, the people from OSIA are very close to um, the people uh, creating OSC query. And uh, VDMX in, uh, on, on Mac is using it as well. Not a lot of uh, softwares are implementing it right now, but uh, hopefully it will be, yeah, this kind of uh, plugins and practices will uh, help uh, bring something more uh, flexible on all, all the softwares and uh, implementing OSC query. Nice, yeah. And this is a, yeah, and when you have the control, like you're controlling now actually a timeline based, the color in touch from what I can, from what it looks like. Yes, n not yet. I just created the layers and what I now have to do is in the layer, I need to define the output. So I select OSC query and set value. And here I need to um, define which parameter I want to control. So with the mapping, I decide, okay, I want to control my float mm -hmm. and I will also control the color, um, my color. So if I um, run that, it will just animate it beautifully as we would um, expect it to do. Yeah. So there's very, really very wow. low friction between the two software now. Mm -hmm. it's a, it's, it, it looks a bit choppy eventually, at least on my computer. Uh, just just to be sure this is not what you see, like this is smooth on your computer, right? And it's just about streaming. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, nice. Wow. Oh. Good. So this is pretty easy to set up. I mean, what's what are the settings on the OSC query server again? You have um, to, you select components basically that uh, should be monitored or controlled. Uh, you have some control over prefix, so you could give these a more like extra information that then shows up in the OSC path, I guess. Yes. So and basically, you can change the name of my effect to something right yeah and then if the... i sync the data again it will be called something else get that yeah include the pages uh, as subgrouping 
um, essentially otherwise all the parameters are under something else yeah. and you have a few settings on the settings page which is mainly the port I believe and yeah that's it yeah. name. sweet and, and, and there's a new toggle where you can um, decide I don't want to use bi-directional communication it's right. new implemented I think it works and I have not seen any problems with it but um, if you deactivate that, it will never cause any problems. So yeah, the uh, I guess especially with animations going on one side, uh, you would start having a fight over uh, values, or is that somehow solved in Chatham? Uh, not uh, not uh, already, but we, we were talking about that uh, today with uh, Manuel. That uh, anti feedback uh, is uh, definitely something that needs to be implemented. Uh, if we are going to use extensively the, the plugin, right now we have not seen like big, re really big problems. Uh, it would need like very different frame rates uh, from both softwares. Mm -hmm. But for sure, as a, as a matter of safety, anti-feedback uh, at least on the chatting side should be implemented. On the on the server side, it's actually a bit more difficult because it's not just a WebSocket; it's a OSC a pipe and a WebSocket pipe to control. Uh, bidirectionally, and then it's right. uh, it's not uh, trivial to to do the link between uh, between what has been received in USC and who should not be fed back data because if you have multiple clients, you still want the other ones to be uh, advertised of the changes, uh, just not the one who sent you the value. Mm -hmm. But because it's not the same pipe, you can't really be sure. But that's yeah, that's just a consideration that needs to be dealt. And it's not that bad. Um, for most for, for most use cases, I would say the already wh what's already existing is really working, uh, uh, and not uh, yeah it, it's really working. It's not uh, in a weird state or not usable state. Uh, most of the time, you will also be interested not to get uh, like bidirectional is something to consider as a as a feature, uh, but not uh, it's not mandatory at all. It's just you don't really. Uh, most of the time, you really want chatting to decide exactly what's happening, uh, but at the same time, maybe you want some information to 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 be fed back for information or for deciding from chatting what should should, should be done. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I again, what's, I'm not using it a lot, but <laughs> oh, what's the infrastructure inside? Like, how does it look like inside the OSC query server? Just so we understand what's actually happening there. Um, yeah. Nice and so, fair. <laughs> <laughs> there is uh, the, the two main things is the OSC in. So basically, when Chaten or some other OSC client is sending some OSC things, it is piped through an OSC in that. And this is then sent, if we have a look here, it is then sent to the extension that holds most of the code. Right. And the the interesting thing, or, or most of the OSC query related stuff, is actually connected to the web server. Um, but most of that logic is also happening inside of the extension. What else? Yeah, there is some module, some Python module that I'm using. Um, the reason is that for the web client or for the web socket updates. I actually need to create uh, OSC binary data to send. And this is mm -hmm. something that uh, Touch Design is not really offering any API. Mm -hmm. but I found a good uh, module that is easy to use. And uh, this is the new part for the bidirectional things. So in monitor changes, basically whenever you update um, the or, or press the sync button, it will create a parameter execute. So whenever, for now, uh, for for every container you want to 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 monitor changes, it will create this. So here I have one for the my effect container. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice, interesting. Yeah, sweet. This is good. Okay. Any questions regarding to that, or should we go further to the builder component? 
Ah, let's go to the builder because I don't see any questions. Let's see. I'll just type here. Let us know your questions. Although if I say it, I don't have to type it, I think. Anyway. <laughs> builder component. So this is something that's not out yet. Um, I haven't seen that. Um, yes. You talked about it, but what is it? I haven't seen that as well, so I'm really <laughs> curious. Yeah, it's, 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 it's one of those Corona projects. Um, <laughs> It's it's not released because there is some things that I think are kind of or are related to the way we we are working. But I think any anyway, even if it's not released, um, I think it's interesting to see how deeply the connection between Chaten and Touch Designer can go. Mm -hmm. um, so basically. Oh, wow. um, I have uh, a builder component. Um, it is a component that um, creates some effect pipeline or a, a whole touch designer project based on JSON files. Um, we can have a look at those JSON files. It's actually rather simple. Um, there is a name and a type. There is a pipeline. So um, those um, names, the input, prefix, fx, postfx, and output, it will be containers that contain some comp components that are defined inside of those. And this is the name of the component, and this is the path to the component inside of a component library that I have created. Mm -hmm. So there's basically effects. Uh, effect pipeline, which will handle all the, the, the visual things. And then there is some helpers that are created. So in the communication, it will add the OSC query server. I have some other small tools. I have some save, some VS Code auto completion module that was also in the community um, section. And I have a viewer that basically enables me to um, view textures um through ndi or something else so ba basically the whole idea is that the touch designer um project is running on on a different machine and i'm remotely controlling everything that touch designer is is doing on that machine um and if i and and there's the parameters json which is yeah, we can have a look which is basically all the parameters of all the components created and it will just set the values that is defined in this JSON files to the components that are created. So if I uh, hit build project, it will create all those components. Uh, we can have a look inside of input. Um, I disabled my camera input here and have set it to dummy input so you can see me through Skype. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, what else? And is this yes. something that goes from one to the other, or here we have input, so those are two generators, in a way? Yeah. So, yeah. So basically, um, there is some um, some convention around how to select things. Um, there is, like, now now I'm in the prefix, so I would normally um, think that I will select something from the input. For, for for the pre yeah. for the input mapping here. And there is uh, a page, it is uh, called Setup. And here, if I actually enable that in the, in the project, then I can edit this here. So I can now select all the components and choose create, for instance, and this is another convention. It's basically looking for a top inside of the grid component with the name null final. Mm -hmm. And this is always the, the component with the, the last thing, but it could also be something else. Nice, yeah. And, and inside, because I also wanted to have those components be able to, or to be able to compose those components. So there's also a, a in and out so if I want to, to plug something else or I want to nest it, 
for instance, the stoner here, it has a connection. It also has the possibility to do to use that. But if it is fed an input from from the network, it will use that. Nice, yeah. So either we use the select as a default for the input, or if there is an input, use that. Or write it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so basically this is a builder. It creates a, a structure for touch designer and that works quite nice. Mm -hmm. um, and the way I will be able to control that is through a module in Shaten that I wrote. As I said before, it is all just a couple of JavaScript things. Um, so I add this module. Inside of the module, I will select the JSON files. Where do I have those? So I select the project file, and I select the parameters file. Is it is the module uh, from OSC or from? Uh... Is it an de de deriving uh, an OSC module or an OSC query module? This is deriving from an HTTP module. So it is sending an okay. HTTP request, so web request, to a web server inside of the builder component. Oh, OK. So if I delete those, just to make it more visible, and I hit this button here, create TD structure, it will send over those JSON files that are selected in SHA-10 to the builder component, and it will create the project based on those JSON files. Nice. Um, this is nice and good, but I still cannot really control um, the components. So I have created some kind of kickstart mechanism, so I can kickstart some elements that I, for our project, I will always use. So if I hit that, it will... Ah, this is a bug I don't understand. There is something with the, the web server that sometimes it is running, but not running, but not working. I, don't, I think it has nothing to do with my things. From the touch designer side. Yes. Might be. Yeah, <laughs> so ba ba basically the thing that I did now is I restarted the, the project the touch designer project and it worked. So hmm. I don't, I don't really know why. Oh, your TD, your, your TD builder is creating uh, on Shatang. Your TD builder is creating an OSC query and a OS. Yes. Module. Wow. Okay. It, it's not just uh, creating that. It is creating an OSC query. So it's creating modules. It's creating states in a state machine, and it is creating uh, dashboards that I can use to control and do things. Hmm. So now so, I'm basically wow. <laughs> very now I can very easily do everything I want to do. So wow. I can create sequences, I can output uh, I'm not I think yeah. I can let's just see that this actually works. I will just control this feedback thingy. And we want to loop that. So if we go here into the effects, there should be the feedback. It is controlled through the here. And because I want to somehow calibrate the, the camera or, or adjust for the, the, the position of the camera, I can just do a little stoner correction here, and it will do send those over to the input mapping stoner that we have seen before. Mm -hmm. And yeah, or if I want to, because we are not or thinking that touch design is not on the same machine, I can click open NDI viewer. It will open an NDI view on my other monitor. Um, let's see, yeah. And I'm already receiving a texture. And inside yeah. of the viewer, I can decide what I want to see. I can see the camera. I can see the input mapping. 
I can see light painting. Mm -hmm. So basically, I have all 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 the controls here. Yeah, nice. So is it possible to even you said you made a structure which or you created a structure which is basically a, a pipeline from generator over effects to output? Yes. Um, would there be potential even to a way that you could uh, reorder that structure based on sequences in Chatin? Chatin? Yes, definitely. Um, so, so basically, um, I have I've chosen this mechanism that the setup is something that I will not try to control during a show. Mm -hmm. So th this is linking the components, um, but I, I maybe I have different scenes and there is some mechanism to define what a scene is. Um, so basically, yeah, let's have a look at that. So inside of the light painting, I have uh, in it a uh, text editor, a text dot. And if I open that, it is a very lightweight mechanism that is registering through an extension what uh, a scene inside of this effect is or what the viewer will want to see. Yeah. And and this init is run whenever the component is created. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. And be, be, because we have a notion what a scene is and then have a very easy scene selector, which basically lets me select the scenes. And if I inside of Shateng for the viewer, I decide I want to have the one output, then it is actually sending me the texture that will be sent to maybe the projector. Mm -hmm. So um, if I change this, then we will actually select a different scene. So I think th this is the, the mechanism that I want to use, but um, I have enabled the, the setup thingy here, so I basically can use on, on any effect, I can just use, uh, choose a different component, so it's, it's w whatever you want to do, basically. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that should make it easy, basically. So when generating shows, it's for you very, it's a, um, your content, you you can really pay attention to the content part, essentially, because the controlling yeah. part is very automated, like yeah. creating those controls. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I didn't, I never imagined doing something like that in chatting, for sure. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, okay, you can do that, apparently. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice summary. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting uh, a lot uh, of, uh, I'm often uh, impressed by uh, how, on how, how people are using it because I'm really using it in, a, in my own way, uh, often quite simply. Yeah. And I just see people doing like, why, what? <laughs> are you really doing that now? But yeah, apparently it works. So. That's cool. literally, that's um, our experience as well. Um, you, you don't it's it's not always apparent what it's what an operator is going to be used for by somebody because yeah yeah, it's yeah this is the beauty of it yeah I, I i think this is something that touch designer and Chaten have in common it's it's really flexible and it is enabling so many use cases that it is very very easy and and good to just build whatever you, you desire to do. Mm -hmm. hmm. so, mm, so this is some... I, I, uh, I, I, I thought maybe we want to have a look at a more complex project. There's some things going on. So this is basically the, the, the full show, the long show that we are having. So there is a lot of effects. There is actually two cameras. There is three projectors, there is a lot going on. And I think especially the Chatin thing, it's, you see that there is a lot of things that are being controlled. So, 
And this is the, the beauty of Chatan. You have one central hub, one central orchestrator that lets you control everything in sync and beautifully time through the, the timeline. Mm -hmm. Or if you're not or if you want to have some interactivity, you have the state machine and you just create some states there to create some interactivity. So it's really, really a nice setup, I think. Super impressed. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tidy. Um, have have you made a custom tidy. icon for a sync chatting instances? I, I'm not sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's two, two times the chatting. Yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> That's so fun. Okay. Great. Yeah. This yeah, is a good example with a lot of timelines, a lot of triggers, uh, and a lot of states. Nice. We had Eric here on the show. Eric, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm just just yeah. watching. Just there. <laughs> you're you're a little bit soft there, Eric. But yeah, I mean. Can't forget to mention always uh, like the uh, the whole web server um, development. It sparked it sparked quite a lot of development in that direction. Like people building um, UI systems that are driven from Touch Designer or that are communicating with other software. And um, uh, yeah, Eric is basically if we have questions for the web server or feature improvements and things like this, then. We uh, go to Eric's desk or Slack channel and talk to him there. Uh, he did basically the whole implementation of that. So it's really useful and opens up so many possibilities there. Yeah. Thank you for. Uh, it's, great, uh, uh, it's great to see you using this way. It's unexpected, but great all the e same. Eric, I think you have to go closer to your mic. But. And now muted. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That's quite fantastic. Mm -hmm. Really um, amazing. Very fluid workflow. Totally. Thank you. Oh, yeah, bad. thank you for for having us for this uh, this session a bit special, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be to be able to. Uh, to to explain that to users and to yeah for people to, to get to understand uh, different workflows uh, outside of touch designer as well yeah it's so useful like <laughs> um, a lot of things that you can spend uh, a tremendous amount of time struggling in touch designer to do um, you can um, outsource so to speak into other applications like Shatan too. Uh, create simple workflows like that, or complex workflows that then come across very simple. Um, so yeah, a very useful a lot of, addition. Uh, a lot of friends are uh, uh, are now a bit annoyed when, uh, like, uh, are uh, uh, I don't know, not happy with me because they, 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 they go to me and say, "Yeah, hey, look, look at this! I spent so many, so much time doing all of this in Touch Designer, <laughs> and it's like this beautiful interface." And I say, wow, okay, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And we spend some time and I show them Shatang and at some point it's like, okay, now I have to do everything in Shatang back because obviously it's uh, <laughs> more interesting. And, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's really fun. Like yeah, a lot of people chose to, to, to switch uh, the control parts uh, outside mm -hmm. and make it very, for, for me, it makes sense also that Tajdana is so strong for content creation uh, and um, the interface part is really interesting as well, but uh, at some point, uh, I really like to have a software that is dedicated to, uh, yeah, play an instrument, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and 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 really not, uh, like lighten up the whole uh, things because now, uh, yeah, uh, 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 everything I, I, will have its own role. I, I totally agree, and I just can say I really have experienced the same. One of the pain points for me in Touch Designer was always building the control UI and free, freeing up the, the Touch Designer project from this logic, from all this logic, it made all the Touch Designer things that I do so much easier because there is a very clear way how I have to do it. And it's quite simple and short is just for controlling everything. 
-hmm. and it is a very clear um, uh, uh, it's it, 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 it's very clear roles who has to do what mm -hmm. yeah and, and it, as you and said uh, as you said before Marcus for me one of the most important things there is that uh, all the time you don't spend on trying to to, to, to create controls and uh, figuring out this uh, figuring this out then you are uh, doing it uh, doing on artistic research or just playing or uh, yeah yeah Sure. Yeah. Kind of things that matter. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Well, again, congratulations on um, A, Shatan, and B, on uh, how you use it and juggling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's super uh, really uh, nice. It was um, uh, beautiful work to see. This should be uh, interesting for the community in large to see this connection like that. Yeah, you had the session in Berlin uh, when the Berlin sessions were still uh, closed to the online public, so to speak, <laughs> uh, at the Node Institute, I believe that was uh, before um, Node was streaming it, right? Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, it was maybe one of the last. It was uh, the day before my birthday, so I guess it was like something like 11th of March or something right. like this. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, I, it was super, super good to to get to see other Thursday NRP uh, <laughs> users, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and yeah, it was very welcoming. Also, I really want to to, to thank you because uh, basically how this went is that I just sent uh, an email to the designer and say, hey, I'm 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 just like this French guy and I'm doing this software, and are you interested in talking, basically? <laughs> And uh, and you answered uh, really fast and really positively, and it was really nice for me to to see that it's uh, 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 yeah you are uh, making this awesome software very famous now, very powerful, and still taking time for uh, people like me and keep being still being approachable. And uh, yeah, uh, for me, it's very important in this whole community and in this whole uh, world we are. Living it in to to get to to meet people like you and uh, interact and share things. Like so thank you. I, think, I, I think that's a real <laughs> cornerstone of our community, though. It's uh, very approachable people. You know, at the at the summit, for example, you know, you would find some of the, you know, superstars, the people who've been, you know, making all the tutorials and teaching people all over the world, and and. Uh, other people who are much newer to the software come to the summit and are totally amazed at how not stuck up anybody is and just how, you know, yeah. very, that's, and, that, and I think it's a, a richer community for it, obviously. So, mm -hmm. yeah. more, more this fun. Is, uh, this is something that we share with the juggling community, actually. Uh, oh, you, really? can, yeah. you would see oh. superstars playing in front of thousands of people and uh, the next hour being training in the gym and just uh, talking with anybody and being just like anybody else. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think I, I really like this, n not making any hierarchies. Uh, yeah. yeah, hierarchies and just, yeah. So maybe at the next, the event, yeah, maybe at the next summit in real life, we can have some juggling. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that would be great. You guys can come and perform for us. <laughs> this would be very good immersive. Yes. I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, well, actually, Manuel, I just want to say you you did send us uh, two other problems, I think, or two questions. I think what we'll do, I'll just send you what I came up with. It's uh, small things, basically, you solved most of the things yourself anyway. So, but mm -hmm. I'll send you the files. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I guess we'll go over, we'll say goodbye here. And then uh, Isabel, myself, we have or uh, we have some announcements, I guess. Announcements, yes. Yeah. Yes, we do. And yeah, but again, thank you so much for being here. Have a very good weekend. And Thanks for having us. And uh, and please keep us up to date with uh, what you're working on. We're we're very uh, interested to see the evolution, the continued yeah, evolution. In, uh, definitely, stay in touch. Uh, this is all very. Uh, very, very useful work that's going to come in handy for so many people here. So, um, yeah, okay. Well, thanks for
Gute Nacht. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> Bye. Good night. Bye, guys. And we are going back to this screen. Um, and I can just switch between screens so easily. It's amazing. Um, so, uh, oh, wait, we had one oh, more yeah. question from the, was, from yes. the, um, from yes, the yes. Uh, audience. Is yes, about... there was a question, and I'm curious, I, I don't know who the person is who made that, who asked that question, because the name was uh, um, M-N-T... Even Star Lovenenda. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yep. Right? Okay, it, so it, it's, it's, it, it's a good question. It's uh, basically what it's like to be a woman working in a, um, a domain that is largely male and white that was the question how does that feel to be a woman working like that well for me um i come from an art and design background where you know it's always been a much broader demographic and i would say very often there would be even more women in my classes than men so um when i joined derivative about 12 years ago the community was a lot smaller um mostly in Canada and the U.S., I would say, and certainly primarily male and mostly European-Americans. But I would say, and I think a lot of people would agree, that we've seen a massive, massive change in community growth in the last 10 years, and, uh, and also that our touch designer community is widely distributed all over the world. We could say that there's probably um, people who've downloaded licenses in every single country in the world. I was just looking while you guys were up there. I was, I was kind of looking at uh, license distribution even in Africa, and it's it's super impressive. And um, and if you go to our Instagram page, that's a really good place also to see the diversity and to see what that diversity does to really enrich the uh, the content and the and the work that is being produced. So. For sure, it's getting it's it's becoming a lot more um, a lot more distributed. We've also seen a steady um, a steady increase in women in the community at our workshops uh, in terms of sort of male female split. So at workshops, our workshops, other people's workshops, at the summit, um, and also I would say that a lot of the sort of luminaries in our community are women, and uh, not just women artists, but women who teach, women who organize festivals and events. And I could start naming them, but I don't want to because I don't want to start naming because I would want to name them all. So I'm not going to go there. But uh, <clears throat> and then Marcus, maybe oh, you've got the Amplify. Uh, um, this yep. is Amplify um, is a digital arts initiative that we are partnering with for the second year. Um, last, so basically, what it is, it's uh, um, it's a program that connects an active network in uh, Argentina, Canada. Um, well, basically, South America, um, Canada, and the UK. And it connects and empowers an active network of women identifying artists and professionals working in digital arts, sound, immersive storytelling, <clears throat> those sectors. And um, so last year, what we did was we had uh, 10 women from the Amplify program participating at the summit. And this year, we are giving a bunch of uh, educational licenses to... Um, To the women in the program so I'd say you know we're always looking for new initiatives so definitely hit us up if you have any ideas or any thoughts like it's definitely things that we want to engage with and hear more about and uh, keep working to uh, make our community better broader faster smarter <laughs> does that kind of does that kind of cover it a little bit was I muted this whole time No, 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 you are not muted. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, well, uh, we'll see, right? Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe also yeah. we have in session as well, like the, the, perhaps on that, on, we basically, we go out as, and uh, we find people or we try to find people who we bring on to in session. Uh, but um, this is obviously a game of visibility uh, for us as well. So we often choose things via what we get exposed to through um, contacts, social media, or what's being posted on our community. But um, we are ex would be we are always extremely happy to get um, registrations via the in session registration form mm -hmm. um, to then actually like also. 
open up a little bit the circle of things that we see because yeah um, this helps definitely so please contact us and definitely um, it's like Christmas when we find something there so uh, right. <laughs> spoil us <laughs> So Marcus, there's a couple of uh, events coming up that we just wanted to mention, and one yep. of them, the deadline is fast approaching, and uh, the framework. Framework, yes, okay. it's uh, ha happening December 4th and 5th, and then the 12th, 11th, and 12th. And so it's an international event, event featuring case studies from the community. Uh, deadline for submissions is uh, November 8th, and it's basically, I think, very short, 10-minute presentations of. Um, um, basically, um, how you've solved unique problems that have to do with design, engineering, producing, learning, or work-life balance challenges related to uh, working with screens and virtual production. So it's 10 minute, you can tape or, or, or uh, speak live, and then there's a question and answer period. And uh, so that's, you've got a couple more days to submit, but it's looking really good. And then, um, so this, this is the second year of our friends in, um, in China, the uh, teen media community, who are really doing a lot of work to promote and teach touch designer in Asia. And I think they're partnering also with TDSW, but uh, it's, uh, it's going to be from November 21st to 23rd, coming very quickly. And uh, it's, it's uh, four different sections, uh, virtual exhibition, interactive performance, theme forum and a touch designer Chinese workshop. So it's more than just touch designer, but uh, definitely it's going to be in, in real life and also virtual. So tune in if you can. And also, if, you, um, if anybody has any events that they would like to uh, share with us, our uh, community, uh, derivative.ch slash community is where you can do that. You can create an event. You can create, as you know, maybe a asset post, tutorial, share, whatever you want. But uh, if, you, if you share your events here, then we can definitely also help promote it at our end through our channels. And, uh, and we're happy to promote it at the next in session too. So let us know. Which is the next in session probably in four weeks. I think we're switching to a four week cycle. All right. Um, and um, yeah, looking forward to it. Oh, do we know me. for sure? Do we do we know for sure who who we're uh, who we're having? Is it Lu is it uh, Louise? Um, that was or, I, um, yes. I hope so. Yeah. We really hope so. We kind of uh, have uh, we'll have to. Yeah, we'll we'll have to. Um, it's pretty much fixed, I think. Yes. So. Okay. Stay tuned. We'll, Surprise. We'll announce um, once we have that uh, ready. So, yeah, well. Uh, All right. Everybody enjoy Thank the summer. Enjoy the summer, enjoy the weekend. Thanks, thanks to our audience in the chat for uh, online for tuning in and spending Friday afternoon, Friday evening, whatever it is for you with us. Oh, I got I to gotta share the uh, URLs here for framework oh, and yeah, also okay. for um, the Flare, uh, Forum. Let me just do that here, and also. Uh, oh, I lost it. I have it. it. Here, I'll, I'll send. Uh, the other thing I wanted to share is also amplify, um, just okay. as a good information on this initiative. And I think that's it. That's two, it. Two hours, seventeen minutes. Not so, bad. Uh, good to see everybody. I guess. And, uh, yes. See you all soon. All right. All righty. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in. Thanks. <laughs>